Hi everyone, it's Jeff here from Avada. In this video, I'll show you how to use the image element. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up with all the latest videos like this one. And if you don't want to miss one, click the bell icon to get notifications of all new videos on our channel. OK, let's begin. The image element is one of Avada's most commonly used elements, along with the button, title, and text block elements. It's simple, yet very versatile, and allows you to place images in many ways on your website. Let's have a look at what it can do. There are, of course, many ways you can add images to your Avada website. You can put them in sliders, as backgrounds in containers, columns, headers, and page title bars. They can be added to blogs and portfolio items as featured images, and they are also part of many elements. But today, we will just look at inserting them using the image element. I'm going to demonstrate this element on a new page here on the Caterer pre-built site. I've made a page using the default template and added a container with a full width column to it. Now if I add the image element to this column, the image placeholder shows us that the image fills the width of the entire column. So the first thing to understand about using the image element is that you need to choose the right size image for the column you are placing them in. Using images in WordPress is a deep subject and goes way beyond this tutorial. But check out our Working with Images playlist for more information on some of the more technical issues around images. So the first option on the General tab is called Image. This is where you set the source of the image. We can either add an image from the media library by clicking on the plus symbol, or we can add an image from dynamic content by clicking on that icon just above it here. Some examples of dynamic content images are featured images, logos, or even a shortcode where we could add an image from a URL. But in most situations, particularly on a normal page, we will add an image from the media library. I will click on the plus symbol to select my image. This opens the media library. At this point, I can either add an image that's already in here, or I can upload a new one. If you're working with a freshly imported pre-built, make sure to install and run a Regenerate thumbnail plugin to regenerate all the different image sizes. I'm going to add this image here, and when I select it, we can see in the Attachment Display settings down in the corner here that its full size is 1920 by 1200 pixels. In this case, that's definitely big enough to fill this full width column. And as we can see, by going to the Global Options, and the Layout tab, this pre-built has a site width of 1340 pixels, so the image should be at least that big when added to a 1-1 column. It's important to note that a column will stretch to display the full height of an image when an image element is added in this way, as opposed to when images are added as column and container backgrounds, where they don't. Now if I edit the image here and change the size to the 800 pixel version, we can see in fact it now only fills just over half the size of the column. I'll just revert to the full-size version of the image using the history states. The second option on the General tab is called Image Aspect Ratio. This allows you to set a specific aspect ratio to the image regardless of its native aspect ratio, which in this case is a bit of an odd one at around 7 to 4. Some cropping will occur, of course, but this option adds a lot of control to this element. When you choose an aspect ratio, the image is visually cropped, and a new option shows below called Image Focus Point. You can use this to determine the center point of the crop. Just drag the marker around to reposition the crop. If you choose Custom, you get a new option with the slider, with which you can determine the aspect ratio manually. The number you set here is the height in ratio to the full width. At 100, it is 1 to 1, or square. And if I set it to 20, for example, that would be 100 as to 20, or in other words, 5 as to 1. I'll just set this back to Automatic. See the How to Use Image Aspect Ratios doc for more details. The next option is Skip Lazy Loading. If your image is in the viewport when the page loads, for best performance you should turn this to Yes, so that it loads immediately. Otherwise you can leave it on No and the image will first load as the user scrolls down to it. Under this is the Image Lightbox option. When it's set to No, the image will not be linked. And the next option is Image Alt Text. As the description says here, the Alt attribute provides alternative information if an image cannot be viewed. So it's always a good idea to add Alt text to images. Alt tags are also commonly used for SEO purposes as well. I prefer to set the Alt text in the actual image in the media library, but if you enter one here, it will override that. I'll just call this one Salad Table. The option under this is called Image Link URL, and this option would be useful if I wanted the image itself to be a link to a different page or site. But if I set the Image Lightbox option to Yes, I get two new options, Gallery ID and Lightbox Image, and the Image Link URL option disappears, 
naturally enough, as now clicking on the image is going to open it in a light box instead. The Gallery ID option is an interesting one. With this option, I can add a name to link any other images on this page with the same ID to form a gallery. Let's add a name in here. I'll just call it Gallery 1. The next option, the Lightbox Image option, allows us to optionally add a larger image to open in the Lightbox. There's not much reason to open an image of the same size in a Lightbox. Our image is larger than the site width, so in this case I don't really need to specify an image here, as it will open the full size one in the Lightbox. Looking at the last few options in the General tab, we have the usual Element Visibility option, which allows you to choose whether the element is displayed on various screen sizes. And if the container you add the image into is sticky, you'll also have an element sticky visibility option here as well. Under this are the CSS class and CSS ID fields, which allow you to further customize the element with custom CSS. In this example, I'll skip all of these and we can move to the Design tab. The first option here is called Image Max Width. With this option, you can specify a maximum width that the image will display in the column, regardless of its inserted size. In this way, you can get an image to display at the exact pixel width you choose, even if it's not that size natively. Another example of using this option is to ensure images are retina ready. As my inserted image is 1920 pixels, if I set the max width to half that, at 960 pixels, it shrinks to fit, and now only fills about two-thirds of the column. But the image is now displaying at half its actual size, which is exactly what retina is all about. OK, let's remove that so we again have the full size image. The next option is alignment. The options here are text flow, left, right and centre. With an image that's going full width like this, these options won't make any difference. But in other situations, they are very useful indeed. This option has responsive settings as well, so you can set your alignment separately for different screen sizes, which can be very handy. Following this is an option called mask, and with this, you can add a mask over the top of your image to create an interesting shape. This can be a very useful effect for images. See the How to Use Image Masks in Avada video for full details on how to use the mask options here. The next option down is Style Type. With this option you can add subtle styling around the image. You can choose from None, Glow, Drop Shadow or Bottom Shadow. If I choose one of these I get further options to customise the effect. In this case I will choose Drop Shadow you can of course also control the style colour. Hover type is the next option, and as the name suggests, this controls the behaviour of the image when you hover over it. You can choose from None, Zoom In, Zoom Out, Lift Up, Magnify and Scroll. Depending on what you choose, you will again get extra options to control that effect. I think I will select Lift Up here. So as we mouse over the image, you can see the effect in action. See the Image Element page on avada.com for working examples of all these hover types. Margin is the next option, and with this you can control the margins around the element as a whole. Border size follows this, and if I choose a border size I will also get an option for border colour, but I don't think a border will look good here, so I will set the border back to zero. We also get an option for a border radius at the bottom. Here you can add a pixel value to round the edges, like 20 pixels, or you can even use the word round to make the image circular or elliptical depending on the aspect ratio of the image. Finally, on this tab, there is a Z-Index option. See the How to Use Z-Index in Avada video for more information on when you might use this. OK, the next tab on this element is the Caption tab, and you will find this on some other image-based elements as well, such as the Image Carousel and the Gallery element. We have a separate video for that feature as well, so please follow the link under the video here to learn about how to add captions to image-based elements. But here, I'll just leave it on the default off. Finally, there is the Extras tab where there are both element animation options and filter types. With animation type, you can get the image to animate onto the page using any one of 11 options. Let's try reveal with color here. From the left, with an animation color of color 5, with just a minus 10 reduction in opacity, at a speed of 1.1 seconds. Yeah, that looks cool. Again, for more info on the animation options, please see the linked video. The filter types can be used to create some very cool effects on the images as well. The eight styles here have a normal and a hover state, and you can set them independently or in conjunction with each other. For this example, I will just go to the Hover tab and set the saturation option to zero. So this means that when I hover the image, the image becomes black and white. You can create all sorts of effects with this, 
but generally remember less is more. For more information on how these filter types work, please see the how to use the filter options video, also linked below. Ok, to demonstrate that gallery ID option we looked at before, I'll just add a few more images to this page, all with the same style and the gallery 1 gallery ID. Just give me a minute. And here we have the page with a few more image elements added. They all have the same styles and hover effects, and if I click on the first one it opens in the light box, and the other images on the page are shown as a gallery due to the common gallery ID. You might notice that if I mouse over these images, I don't see the alt tag I entered. That's because this is the title tag we are seeing here. The alt tag is only shown when the image can't be displayed. So it's also good to add titles to your images when uploading them in the media gallery. Otherwise this will show the file name. Ok, that's the image element. Thanks for watching. Let us know in the comments how you like to use this element. And make sure to check out all the other image based elements, like the gallery element, the image before and after element, the image carousel element, and the image hotspots element. Ok, this concludes our video on how to use the image element. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up with all the latest videos. And if you have any questions or need assistance, please create a support ticket and our team will gladly assist you. As always, we want to thank you for choosing Avada.